Okay, today we're going to uh, replace a AC port here on a HP 11 G5 EE, and I'm gonna demonstrate that. And so some tools that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver, you're gonna need a flathead tiny screwdriver, needle nose pliers are always good, or these are tweezers, a uh, plastic apparatus, I think it's called a smudger, spudger. Um, that's always helpful to pry apart the case. So what we're gonna start with, we have to remove a bunch of screws on the back of the case. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. But to start, they have these little plastic um, things that cover the screws. And what I do is I place them in order which where I remove them. So, cause some of them are very flat and some are tapered. And they have specific holes to go into. So do that and I'm going around the some are easier to get out than others because they're glued in all right that one I'm skipping for right now that one's there so ugh. there so when they're all out they will look like the back of the Chromebook when you put them on the table when you get them out that's there sorry if I pull it off the side of the screen this is my first YouTube video and this one's in the middle one so now you just have to take out the screws and I just use the needle nose, I mean the Phillips head screwdriver. I have a nice case that has about 10 different versions of the needle, no I mean of the Phillips head. And I just put them in the pile. It's good to have a magnetic screwdriver to pull them out because they don't want to come out. Like this one doesn't want to come out. Nope, I'll come back to that one. Okay, now that I've taken all the screws off and I've put them into a pile, um, now you're going to uh, take the keyboard off. And when you open up every Chromebook, it's going to automatically turn on. You want to make sure that you power it down before you start working on it. So I usually just hold the power key down. If it doesn't like me, I'll hit the shutdown. There we go. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I have to pry off the keyboard from the back case. So I use this or my screwdriver. This one won't scratch the front, um, but sometimes it's hard to get underneath. And so you're just gonna get underneath and then work your way around it. If you have nails, it makes it a little easier. I don't have nails. And so you just keep prying it off. Once you get part of it done, it makes it easier the rest of the way. Sounds like you're breaking it, but you're not. You're just popping the little things. So if you drag that around, Don't worry, Tara, I'm not breaking it. <laughs> so you're popping it off. And now we're gonna get to the tricky part, is it's being held on, if you can see, underneath by the uh, touchpad and the keyboard are plugged into the motherboard here. So I'll have to lift it up and stick my fingers in and undo the latches. So, I don't know if you can see in there, but these two are attached here and here. So you're gonna reach in on the side and you can pull it off. And the same thing over here. You get just enough tension to be able to lift it out. So now you can disconnect, you've disconnected your keyboard. So I place it over here from the motherboard and the battery. 
So what I always do is I take, you're gonna need to take the battery off just to be safe that you don't have any power issues. So I'll put that off on the side and I kind of put everything with everything else. To disconnect the battery, it's right here and you lift up and you're gonna pull back. So it's a little tough, but it will go. So that's your battery. So I put that with, with that screw. Try to keep everything organized because as you're pulling everything off, you might even forget where um, everything goes. So here, this is where our port is. And the problem is, is it runs underneath your motherboard and plugs into the motherboard on top. So we have to lift the motherboard up in order to get it out. So, which means we have to disconnect some screws. So we have a screw here, 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 and, and there's one here. So there's one, two, three, four screws, five over here. So what I'm gonna do is just disconnect some things now. So I'll disconnect the AC port in there, and then I usually disconnect this one here. I don't know what this is to, this is to the speakers just to make it easier to lift up the motherboard. And you just pull out again. I'll get back to that one, he doesn't like me. But you also wanna disconnect your screen because these all have very short little loops to pull. And then we'll disconnect this one over here. So this one you don't have to, but I'll leave it for now. So now we're gonna disconnect the motherboard. So you just wanna remember where you put your screws, where they go. Again, it's helpful if you have the magnetic. Um, so I'm gonna kind of put them in a shape over here of the motherboard. And then you got this one behind the plastic. What's nice is they put this little plastic covering on it to keep um, to keep all the dust off. So that one's there. So I'm gonna keep my shape. Then I have one down here. Luckily they're all they use the same Phillips head. here and I got to hold it back here because it keeps tipping over because of the weight of the screen there and then is that it yep that's it okay and now we're we can slide out the motherboard and just kind of rest it here when, when we're ready um, just make sure that I get them all. It's kind of snapped on a little bit. So, but we also need to get, this is where our AC port is. So we have to get at it and there's a little covering of a screw. So we actually have to take off the screen, the hinge. So that's these two screws here. Come on. And then this one here. Again, I do the same thing. I kind of keep them on the same side. You can also do pieces of paper that say left hinge, right hinge. However, makes it work for you. This one's got two over here. <laughs> it's not complicated. <laughs> it's just it's a, lot a lot of screws. <laughs> just a lot of screws. But if you keep it organized, it will go back together easily. Come on. So now, you kind of have this away. So you can tip the screen back and now, 
I'll hold it up. It's this little tiny screw right here that holds in the AC port right there. So we'll disconnect that and then we can take that off and take slide the motherboard out as well. So that goes there. And then here's the motherboard. So you need to lift it up because it has all of the, um, the USBs and all that in there. So now we slide that out. And because it's connected here, I'm just going to rest it over there out of the way. And so now our AC port is right here. So it's got these little grooves that kind of stick in so it knows where to go. Just keep it underneath. So I'm just going to pull it off. It's a little tape. It'll be enough sticky for us. I don't know. Can you see underneath there? I wish I could. I always have a problem with that one. So I'll hold it up. So that's the dead one. And you see that little grooves in the sticky? That's the channel with which you're going to put the new one. So now we have the new one. So we're going to put it in. And it sets right there. And then we're going to screw that on to hold that back in. This is the hard part, getting my fingers to put the screws back in the right holes. So now it sits there. And now I'm going to put it underneath the motherboard. And then we stick it down. And there's enough sticky tape to still do it. So now it sticks out the other end right here. So all we're going to do is bend it and stick it in there. But first we want to put the motherboard back in the slots. Everything's nice, nice. And so we want to stick it underneath this wire here. And then we can push it so it goes back into the USB holes. And if it's not lined up right, it won't go in. So if it's lined up right, it goes in really easy. And then you push it down and it kind of snaps in. It's got some holders here. There's one here. Uh, didn't go in that one, so hold on a second. If it doesn't go in right, you can pull it back out. So see these little tapers that hold it down? right here. So I should have slid it in underneath first before I went this way. Get it lined up. And yes, even Tara can do this. Come on. All right, hold on. It's not lined up. If it doesn't slide in nice and easy, it's, it's not lined up. There we go. All right, so now it's back in. We look on the side to make sure everything's in. And so now we're going to put everything back together. So first I'm going to do the motherboard. Probably be the easiest. So this one here went here. So now you're just going to screw everything back on. My fat fingers get in the way, and the magnetic keeps trying to pull the screw up. <laughs> this is the hardest part for me is to put it back together. And there's little arrows that are next to each hole, if you look, that says, um, they say right here, so it kind of helps you remember where to put everything. So if you did forget, where they go. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning is when you're dealing with the motherboard, um, just make sure that you've discharged all um, static electricity because you don't want to fry the machine. 
Um, so if you're wearing a fuzzy sweater, you might not, you might want to take it off before you work with it. Um, so now we've reattached the motherboard, reattached the hinges, and now we're going to put uh, the pieces back together. So here's the screen. So you're going to slide the screen back in. You got the little black lever. Again, some fingers are easier than others to do that. And then we got to reconnect this one. So that should be in. And then this is the AC port. So now you're going to plug this in. And it bends over the right way, so it should just go whoop, should just go in. And now it's back in. And then lastly is the battery. So oh, thank you. My little tab got in there. Thank you, Tara, my assistant. Um, so now we're going to plug the battery back in. And again, it just sits in there nice. And we got to screw that in, and I put the screw over here because that's a different length. So, and if you hear a little background noise, there's a nice little class next door having a exciting party. So, yeah. So there we go. So now our battery is screwed on. And now we're going to plug in our battery. Again, you just stick it into the slot and it's going to you're going to hear a snap tell you that it's all the way in. Just want to make sure you push it in straight. There we go. Snap. All right. So no, the battery is not in on this side, right? So I got to pull this back out. I want to make sure it's flat, and I didn't. This side isn't flat, so let me just do that again. So I took it off. Sorry about that. So it should sit down nice. Now that's nice and flush with that. Otherwise, when you put the case on, it wouldn't. The keyboard it wouldn't shut. Back on. Now it snaps in. So now we're gonna reconnect. This is I would say this is the hardest part for me is reconnecting my keypad and uh, the keyboard, the touchpad. Sorry. So see how this is taped on. I'm gonna peel that back just to give me a little more slack. So when I'm working with this. So you have to stick in the little piece for the touchpad. My hand's probably in the way, but it's just same. It works as the other ones. You stick the little blue piece of tape in and then clamp it down with that white tab. I call it a tab. But as you can see, It's a little tricky. So I usually give up on that one for a minute. This, the bigger one for the keyboard is easier. So once you snap it down, if it's engaged, it won't pull out. I'm just going to have to twist this this way. If you, if you engage it and it doesn't come out right away, then you've done it correctly. Yesterday when I did one of these, it took me 10 minutes to put this thing in. Nope. Strike one. I'm asking Tara to pause it while I'm struggling with this, but she <laughs> All right, so that's back on. So now it's attached on, and then you can just push this back up to attach, but if you want. And now you're just going to snap in the keyboard um, like this. You just work your way around and it just you're just pushing it down on the edges. So one thing you want to do before 
So now you're done, you've reattached everything, but one thing you wanna do before uh, you screw on all the screws on the back is to make sure the AC port actually is gonna take a charge. So what Tara's doing is gonna give me a plug and I'm just gonna make sure that it's working. All right, so I'm gonna take your little AC adapter, plug it in, and now we have the orange light, so it's, take, it's working. So now, um, I would unplug it again, and now we can work on putting all the screws back in. Um, so that's basically on how to replace a AC port of a HP 11 G5EE uh, Chromebook. So have a nice day.